Welcome back. If it is John, just watching the news at 10, watching Channel Television, celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting and the news at 10. And here are a few pictures of you sent into Eyewitness Portal. Let's begin with this one. It's from the central area in Abuja, the federal capital territory. It shows cattle grazing under this bridge and obstructing traffic. Our Eyewitness reports are calls on relevant authorities to prohibit such acts. Our next picture is from Kwara State, from the Felodun local government area. We see these young men sand filling the road. Our Eyewitness reporter commends this effort. Next, we see a picture of trucks in the queue spending several hours to travel from Jebba to Loring. Eyewitness reports of calls and state authorities to fix the road to avoid these sort of jam uh, gridlocks. Then we head on to our Papa area in Lagos, so we see a flooded road. Eyewitness reports of once government to create larger drains to prevent this problem. Our journey ends in Wuzie and the Wuzie uh, market area in Abuja. Uh, store owners are protesting what they describe as illegal occupation of their market. They want the government to intervene and for justice to take place. Thanks for sending in those pictures. Now that you too can become an eyewitness reporter for Channels Television. In other news now, the federal government's economic management team has been tapping into the wealth of experience of some financial experts in the country. At a meeting in Abuja today, chaired by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo. The EMT met with Mr. Bismarck Rwani, Mr. Bodio Gosto, Professor Akban Ekbo, Dr. Ayo Teriba, and Professor Badai Sani, with the aim of finding quick recovery options for the economy. Issues discussed at the meeting include a review of the new foreign exchange regime and its effect on the economy, as well as the draft medium-term economic framework for 2017 to 2019. Some of the suggestions put forward at the Parley on how to revive the economy include massive infrastructural spending with active private sector participation, ensuring pro-people economic policies and increasing the supply of dollars to the forex market. At least four suspects have been arrested in connection with the burning of the office of the Independent National Electoral Commission in Bori area of River State. This was announced today by the new Commissioner of Police, Francis Odessoyan, in a meeting with the resident Electoral Commissioner and other officials of the Independent National Electoral Commission in Port Harcourt. The CP, who also met with officers and men of the command, gave an assurance that residents, to the residents that police is poised to run criminals out of the town. And here's Linda Kigbe in Abuja with more on the news at 10. Hi, Linda. Great to see you. Hello, Amarachi. Good to see you and welcome to the nation's capital. The ruling All Progressives Congress is taking steps to resolve the budget padding scandal rocking the House of Representatives. The embattled former chairman of the House of Representatives Appropriation Committee, Abdul Mumin Jubrin, has appeared at the APC headquarters in Abuja for a meeting with the party's leadership. Last week, the APC's Deputy National Publicity Secretary, Mr. Timmy Frank, had asked the John Oyegun-led party leadership to resign for failing to intervene in the House padding controversy. Honorable Abdumumin Jubrin has accused the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Yakubu Dogara, and the House leadership of padding sections of the 2016 budget. What we did was actually, we heard from him. We earlier heard from the Speaker 
But because it was not in the newspapers, like you just went and published, uh, nobody knew we held a meeting with the speaker. You know, and uh, I want to say that what we discussed, honestly speaking, was to get a better brief because we have to be carried along. We have, they are our members. I'm here on the invitation of, uh, of our great party, the, the APC, and uh, I honored uh, the invitation. And uh, we discussed extensively on uh, the crisis uh, facing the House of Representatives. And uh, we will continue uh, to discuss and, uh, and engage uh, ourselves. Uh, I will uh, continue to honor the invitation of, uh, of the party, and respect uh, the party. And uh, I'm sure that uh, whatever it is, uh, you will know in due course. Meanwhile, a legal practitioner, Mr. John Oluyedi, is advocating the strengthening of a nation's critical institutions to ensure adherence to due process. Mr. Oluyedi, who was a guest on our program, Sunrise Daily, says if the rule of law is fully implemented, the persons involved in the budget pardon scandal would have been arrested and prosecuted. Fraud stars, people, the National Assembly, they are all coming on air to say we parted, we parted. No, they did not part, they forged. And forgery is known to Nigerian law. And... And it is nauseating that, I mean, all these guys are coming on air and um, different camps boasting and saying, oh, padding means, oh, according to dictionary.com, this is padding, a legal uh, dictionary, this is what padding means. No. The, if, that, and that's what we're talking about, strengthening the institutions. This is not a situation where Mr. President should take any action. This is a situation, I mean, this is a situation where, for instance, if the police was strong enough, all these people should be in handcuffs. From the person making the allegations to the person sitting as speaker in the, in the uh, out, uh, House of Reps, all of them should be in handcuffs. Why is it that the institutions that are supposed to curb crime, they, they, they find it so easy to go after ordinary Nigerians in respect of stealing goods, like you said? But when these self-confessed criminals come on air to say, oh, I'm a thief, I forged the Nigerian budget. We forged it. We, all, we are all accomplices. Nobody is talking. They are waiting for petition from one of those who forged. Away from the budget pardon scandal in the House of Representatives, sustaining the progress made in the development of basic infrastructure in Edo State would be the focus of the APC if its candidate in the governorship election, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, is voted into office. This was made known today by Governor Adam Soshomale as the APC's campaign train took its manifesto to a Ryongwon local government area of Edo State. Who will be our candidate for governor? <laughs> Who will I go vote for? The state chairman of the All Progressive Congress introducing the party's governorship candidate to the crowd in Abudu community, situated in Orion or local government area. The reception is rapturous, a sign that the campaign team is welcome. After the dance, the governorship hopeful goes straight to the business of the day. More importantly, what I will do, in, what we, myself and Philip, will do in the next four years is to emphasize jobs. Now work, now we won't bring corn. When I get work for here, the youth, when I get anything when they do, I go give when I work. If I bring work, when I go work, when I go work, when I go drive tractor, when I go go farm, when I go do industry, when I go work for industry, that is what we are bringing to Oriomo. On his part, the state governor, Adam Doshiomole, recalls how tough it was to get to this present point, but says it was worth it in the end. Together, we drew, the vi we had the vision, and we agree on the mission. We find the good heart 
to do what we had to do. We fought a very vicious opposition. We liquidated the Godfathers. We liberalized our politics. We return power truly to the people. He also sets a target for the party's candidate. As the capital of Oriowo, you deserve street light. Obaseki has to provide those street lights, and I guarantee he will do so. So that life does not end at 7 p.m. Nightlife must return to Abudu. With good schools, good roads, you need street light. So that when we say capital, you can feel it. Promises made which the people hope will be fulfilled. Your coming on board is God's making to redeem the poor and the neglected rural and urban communities in those states. Every sign shows that you are God sent. The campaign can be described as a success, building confidence in the party and candidate that come September there will be more reason to dance. Ahead of the 2018 governorship election in Ikiti State, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is set to begin the distribution of permanent voters' cards on Wednesday, August 3rd, 2016. Speaking at the interactive session with stakeholders in Ikiti, the state capital, the administrative secretary of the commission, Musulim Omoleke, who represented the resident electoral commissioner, says the purpose of the meeting is to demonstrate transparency and fairness in adherence to the rule of law. The Commission has given directive that uh, we should continue the distribution of uh, permanent voters' cards. And uh, in view of the fact that we believe in the culture of integrity, culture of transparency and fairness, we feel that we should inform all the stakeholders involved. And that's why we call the meeting today to, to tell them what they should be expecting, that distribution commences on Wednesday, time it's 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily, excluding a weekends and uh, public holidays, and that uh, distribution or collection should not be by, by proxy. You should have to present whoever wants to collect the cash should come physically to get the card. And still ahead on the news at 10, Asian demand for West Africa's crude set to slip lower this month. That's some business news. Join us again.